Security Breach released under two years ago, and since then has earned the title of the worst and buggiest entry into the official FNAF timeline. This game was littered with bugs, really confusing storyline, bad gameplay, it was just all over the place. A couple months after the release, Steel Wool revealed a new DLC called Ruin. Flash forward now to 2023, and we have a teaser trailer giving us an approximate month, Dorco's charity stream revealing several unseen screenshots, and Steel Wool teasing every FNAF fan on Twitter with guess that sketch posts. But finally, after a long, long time of waiting, on July 25th, Ruin would release. The fandom was split into two, people who had faith that this DLC would be amazing, and people who were scared of the game flopping like Security Breach did, and I was one of those people. So when Ruin dropped, I instantly jumped to it to see if Ruin could possibly fix what Security Breach broke. Now, at the time of making this, I was already halfway through through making another video and working on two big videos at the same time would probably have been a lot of work for me. So instead of covering the entirety of Ruin, I'll instead just be going over the things that I liked and what I didn't like. However, with that being said, this video will still contain very heavy spoilers. So if you haven't played Ruin yet, then you should probably go check that out first. It is a free DLC after all, so there's no harm. But if you don't care about spoilers or you've already played the game, then sit back, relax, and join me as we dive into the Ruined DLC to see if it really did fix Security Breach. First, I want to start off with the things that I actually liked about this game because surprisingly, this game actually has a lot of stuff going for it. First, which is probably one of my favorite changes the DLC has made, is with the atmosphere. While Security Breach definitely had stuff like bugs and bad storytelling, my biggest problem with the game was the fact that it's a horror game that wasn't <laughs> horror at all. However, Ruin changed that drastically. It takes the original location and does a full 180 kickflip and trashes it completely making the environment fully, wait for it, ruined. Yeah, how many times are you gonna hear that joke in these types of videos? This messy, withered environment suits a horror game much better, and I was absolutely thrilled when the start of the game had small little scares that actually got to me. On top of the environment suiting the game more, the gameplay also fits really well into the horror genre, and is actually a lot more fun compared to whatever Security Breach had. All the different puzzles that you need to do, like the Faz Wrench and the Node Fixing game, they're all really interesting and fun and work a whole lot better than playing a game of laser tag. It instead actually has cool mechanics like the Monty in the Water segment and needing to find camera stations around the map to distract animatronics. Although some of the node puzzles did feel a bit repetitive at times, it did actually add new things each time it came around to make it feel a bit more fresh, like when it added the endos or the music men. The visuals for this game also look absolutely amazing. The models look great all broken down like this and I love the cheese detail on Chica signifying that even without her beak she was still eating trash which just adds a little bit more personality to the game. The animations all look really awesome but the jump scare animations definitely got a major glow up in Ruin. In the new animations the characters actually attack the player instead of just jumping in their face and screaming which honestly gave me a kind of kid friendly Resident Evil vibe how they actually attack you when they kill you. Ruin also lacks a lot of bugs that the base game had. The only bug that people are really talking about right now is currently with the mask and it's where you take it off and get shot up into orbit which will most likely get fixed seeing as right now it's the only big bug that people are running into. But besides that, bugs are very little. Besides this one where you can take the mask off when inside of an object but. <laughs> Ruin also has a lot of hidden content to be found which adds a lot of replayability to the game and I've even found myself looking through videos of people breaking the game and looking through the files to try and find more secrets and unused content. There were also some smaller things that I liked, such as the return of the endos, which was my favourite part of base security breach. I also liked that I actually started to get attached to certain scenes, like when Freddy came out of the rubble or when we had to kill Roxy, but I stopped caring about Roxy when Cassie started crying during the entire elevator ride afterwards. Oh, look where we are. 
Cassie, shut up. I also really like that the Monty Golf mini game that you can play around the start of the game uses unused maps from the original Monty's Golf. Overall, this game is already looking to be a big improvement over Security Breach. With the game being actually pretty scary, the gameplay being a lot more fun, and the bugs being reduced by a lot. But we haven't talked about some of the flaws that this DLC has, and there are quite a few. Now, as I mentioned before, the bugs in this game are very few now. However, I also mentioned that the game did crash a lot for me because I'm on a PS4, which again, could be a hardware issue, but it is still a supported console, so you would think that it would be optimized enough to not happen 50% of the time you die. However, this could easily be fixed with a little bit of tweaking to the PS4 optimization, and then the problem would be resolved. However, something not so easily resolved is the lore that this game brings. Security Breach had probably the weakest entry to the FNAF lore, and Ruin does continue that trend. The actual game's story is pretty nice. This game contributing to the FNAF lore, I don't really follow the lore too much anymore, but let's just say that MatPat is going to make so many bags after this one. There are so many questions that I had when playing this DLC, like what ending does this game continue from, what is the mask that we use, how does it even work, and how does it let us run through through objects. There's too many questions with too few answers, which is a very popular trend for FNAF that I'm coming to realize. On top of the lore, the AI for the animatronics was also pretty crappy. Like Monty in the water section, although I liked his gimmick, he just kind of picked these two spots to sit in and he never really moved, so that was cool I guess. And also the glitch trap mother broke right here and just didn't move for some reason. Every ending for the game, the normal ending, secret secret ending and scooping ending all make me feel like I just played this entire game for nothing. I had fun with the game and would recommend it, I'd actually plan on going back to unlock secrets and stuff, but the ending just kind of happened and that's it. And then the worst part is, we're left on another cliffhanger, another popular trend for FNAF. But oh my god Gregory you fucking- The big plot twist of the game is that the mimic was Gregory the whole time and it used us to shut off the security so that the mimic could get set free. Now I don't know about you, but this was probably one of the most easily predictable things to happen in the entire game. I'm not saying that this is a bad plot twist or anything, but I called this around the start of the game and I stayed with that theory all the way through and then it turned out to be true. The loading screens were also really long, like scroll through Instagram for a bit then go get some food, have a shower, then come back and the game is still loading long. Again, I'm on a PS4, so that could be the problem. But out of every game I've played on this 10-year console, this game has the worst loading times I've ever experienced. I also didn't really like that they had a room dedicated to teasing Foxy, which had me kind of hyped, I'll be honest, and then he just didn't show up, kind of ruined that moment for me. It's not the worst thing ever in the world, but it kind of made me a little unhappy because Foxy is awesome. So that's that. The pros and the cons. The yays and the nays. So now onto the big question. Did Ruin fix Security Breach? Well personally, I can't say yes or no. It's not good enough to say that it's one of the best FNAF experiences ever, but it's also not bad enough to say that FNAF is completely over and dead. If I had to put it into a metaphor, because I'm poetic like that, I would probably say that Ruin shined a brighter light on Security Breach. Not enough to make it the main attraction, but enough for the people at the back to notice it. Putting this game on the Jaden scale, because you can't have a Jaden video about it, I'd put Ruin at a nice 6.5 out of 10. It is a very good DLC and definitely does a lot of things that Security Breach didn't, and I would highly recommend you play this game if you have it. However, it does still have its flaws, which don't ruin the game personally, but do hinder the experience. But with all that being said, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, then consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel to support me. The video I mentioned working on in the beginning is coming along pretty well, so I hope that if you enjoyed, you would stick around for that one because I'm really happy with the way it's turning out to be. I'm trying to frequently update my video progress on the community tab so people don't think I die, uh, which, I mean, thank you for worrying, but, uh, <laughs> but that's about it. I hope that you have or have had a good morning, evening, or night, and I'll see you in the next video where I talk about Security Breach's third DLC, Security Breach. Reach fixed. Bye-bye.